I'm Britt from Slanted Spines and welcome to my video! Ace, what asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex by Angela Chen. This is going to be a book review video that's more like a book report. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. It was amazing. The grandfather clock reminds me that I should comment on my location. I am not in my usual setting. I am currently in my childhood bedroom. I think I'm going to post this video before I post my vlog, but I am here for the weekend house slash cat sitting yet again for my parents while they are out of town this weekend, and I'm putting together a vlog, so I'll talk all about this in a later video. But for now, I am going to discuss Ace, whether or not you think that you may be asexual, or if you know for sure you're not asexual, I think we should all read this book anyway because it is very telling about society. It's just a great perspective and just a really amazing book to kind of help you understand asexuality better and society better as well. Asexuality is a lot more complex than I think people realize. It's more complex than I even realized before I read this book, so that's why I thought it was important to make this video to kind of put some information out there and then you can gauge if you're interested in picking up this book or not. I do want to say a couple things off the bat. I do not want to make this video incredibly long, so I apologize if this is an oversimplification of asexuality and this book Ace. I don't want to get too bogged down in reporting every single fact. I also plan to write up a book report and post it to my blog slantedspines.com this next Friday, which would be June, I don't know, June something, but I will retroactively link that blog post in the description for this video once it is posted. Additionally, I will be discussing sex. If you are a parent and your child is nearby and you don't want them hearing this sort of discussion, or if you are a child and you don't want your parents to hear this video, then just a warning, it's going to be a little bit more explicit than how I normally discuss things in my videos. I mean, I'm an adult. I think most of the people who watch my channel are adults, but if your environment does not cater to this sort of discussion, then I just thought I'd give you a fair warning. Moving on, let me also say, in case you don't know, based off the title of this book, asexual people are often referred to as ace or aces. I will be referring to asexual individuals as aces pretty commonly throughout this video. Um, and then I also want to clarify the term allosexual. So aces are people who do not experience sexual attraction whereas allosexual individuals are people who do experience sexual attraction, no matter to whom they, in general, experience sexual attraction. The book begins by really posing the question, what is sexual attraction? And the tricky thing is, aces don't experience sexual attraction. So how are aces to know what they don't experience? Aces might look at someone and think, wow, they have a really pretty body. And because they think that person has a pretty body or a nice sense of fashion or whatever, since they don't experience sexual attraction, they don't know that that's not what sexual attraction is. That's more aesthetic attraction. And the author herself, Angela Chen, mentions in the beginning how she thought she experienced sexual attraction her whole life until she finally started having conversations with other people about sexual attraction and realized that her experience was way different from her peers' experiences. Sexual attraction and sex drive are different things and I think as a society we tend to convolute all these sexual activities and feelings and practices into just like one thing, but it's possible for somebody to not experience sexual attraction, but to experience a libido or a sex drive. Because sexual attraction is more of like a magnetized activity, whereas sexual drive is just like, and it's not because you saw someone hot, it's just because you feel horny. That sort of like aroused nature of the body. So there's a difference. And while Angela Chen herself is ace, she also comments that 
her experience is not indicative of the entire ace community's experiences. Uh, the ace community is not a monolith. Like every other group, the ace community is very different from one another within the community. What all aces have in common is that they do not experience sexual attraction, but everybody has a different way of approaching sex from that starting point. So for example, Angela Chen explains how even though she doesn't experience sexual attraction, she does enjoy sex and engage in sex. Whereas there are other aces who don't want to ever have sex. And it's not like a celibacy thing, it's like a genuinely either repulsed or totally neutral to the activity. And I think that's something I hadn't ever realized about asexuality is that because sexual attraction differs from sex drive, it is possible to be like a person who enjoys sex but just doesn't experience sexual attraction. Part of what this book does is break down how sex obsessed our society is. We don't realize it because we are inundated in it and it's subliminal at this point, but sex is political. While you may not actively realize that c sex is very compulsory in our society, and it's very contra it's a very contradicting topic as well because there's different groups that have very strong clashing viewpoints on sex but the overall narrative is that people healthy people have sex whether we realize it or not the messaging of our society is really ingrained in our minds and so whether or not we're actually in the bedroom discussing politics before we have sex uh it's subliminal and it is in our minds very very deeply ingrained and sex is also a performance so not only the act itself but how we talk about sex helps us fit in or not fit in for aces then that can be a really isolating and excluding experience to be in the society um, that really pressures us to have sex. And because our society thinks that sex is literally the greatest thing ever, or at least that's what we're told, for aces they often encounter this dialogue of, well, you just haven't had the right sex yet. People often think that aces are fundamentally missing out on the greatest joy of life. Like that's a horrible thing to be told, like you're fundamentally missing out on the best joy in life. That's why there are so many like libido enhancing prescription medicines that are targeted to women and even men is because if you aren't having sex, there's something wrong with you, which is not the case. This book really examines the ways in which people are pressured into having sex and to feeling like that is the greatest joy in life when there are so many joys in life that don't have to do with sex, like the joy of eating a really delicious meal. There are so many physical, mental, and emotional joys in life that for a lot of people, and aces especially, are better than sex. And I think it's really harmful for this to be the rhetoric that we teach people is that sex is the ultimate joy in life. And for some people it is, and that's okay, but there are just so many different people and like variations. I also really appreciate that this book is very intersectional. So there are a couple chapters on, for example, how asexuality is often whitewashed and as well how asexuality, how that intersects with disability. Angela Chen interviewed a lot of people and includes a lot of other people's personal experiences in this book and like different viewpoints and different like life experiences. I appreciate how Angela Chen does such a great job of like incorporating all these different viewpoints and really taking a close look at how our society affects how we view ourselves and that just goes back to the whole thing like sex is political like the way we see ourselves cannot really be peeled apart from how society sees us because we internalize so much of the messaging that we experience as a human being in a society. The messaging that I internalize about who I am is different from the messaging that somebody else of a different race or a different social class or a different uh, gender or a different orientation or physical ability would experience and what they would internalize from what society has told them. So asexuality is different for every ace, you know, depending on their background and depending on just like how they feel. Another thing that I want to mention is that you can have sexual attraction to certain people, but your romantic attraction can be different. So, for example, somebody can be bi-romantic and asexual, which means romantically they're interested in being in a relationship with two or more genders. 
Whereas somebody can be aromantic and asexual, which means they are not romantically interested in anybody and they don't feel sexual attraction for anybody. You can also be like aesthetically attracted to somebody, but not romantically attract to them. Um, it's very, it's very complicated and I think that's absolutely beautiful and I think we should embrace these complicated definitions and labels because they really do a better job of painting the human experience. Humans vary so much person to person and I really think it's amazing that we're beginning to have terminology for all these different experiences because as Angela Chen mentions in this book, you know, having a word for it can be the difference between hating yourself and accepting yourself. Feeling like there's something wrong with you for not wanting sex can be really isolating and a really like self-loathing experience whereas if you have a term for it like asexual you can almost feel a sense of pride and community in that and really own it and not feel worse about yourself or how you are. People will mock LGBTQIA plus being like alphabet soup or just saying people are special snowflakes and need a different word for everything but honestly I don't think there's anything wrong with embracing how different people can be person to person and how having a word for it can be a really empowering experience. You can be a hater, but I'm embracing my differences and living my best life and connecting with other people who feel similarly to me and just really understanding the full scope of what it means to be a human, both sexually, romantically, emotionally, expressing a gender-wise too. Do not let those people make you feel ashamed of yourself. Let them be haters. They can be a part of the hater group and they don't get our fancy fun words. I also really liked how there was a section in this book near the end that discussed relationships, like non-romantic, non-sexual relationships, and the term she uses is queer platonic relationship, which is basically the idea um, of like what does it mean to be romantically interested in someone versus just interested in them as a friend. Why do we view romantic relationships as like the soul fulfilling relationship that we can have in life when having friends and having family are just as equally fulfilling yet we tend to prioritize romantic relationships over all other relationships and kind of rejecting that notion that if you don't have a significant other in your life, then you're fundamentally missing out on the best joy in life. Similar to sex, I really love that chapter because I think there, there really is this overwhelming forceful message in our society that you are lonely and sad and pathetic if you don't have a significant other, which is not the case at all. You have family, you have friends, you have neighbors, you have community members, you have online friends. There are just so many ways to connect with other people and animals that are just as fulfilling as romantic relationships and for some people who don't even want romantic relationships more fulfilling. Maybe romantic relationship is the most important part of your life but we should impose that expectation on other people's life choices. I really recommend reading this book for more information. I think that you will find it so interesting and enlightening. I imagine that the audiobook is really good too and I think it's just a really special book that maybe you don't know that you need to read, but once you read it, you'll feel a sort of acceptance or understanding about yourself that you hadn't realized before. And if that's not the case, then perhaps you will be able to open up your heart and allow other people to live their lives and to support them in a better way after having read this book. So that is all I'm gonna say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment with anything your heart desires, if you have any questions or anything you want to add on to this that I overlooked or missed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. See ya.